Outside the huge mansion, a horde of zombies screamed as a black-haired man flew past them. With only passing by them, the zombies were tossed high in the sky or crashed into a ruined house and trees. The new crew member had only one objective, to hunt down the coward who ran away from their fight and kill him. The shirtless man moved with great speed around the trees which were covering a large amount of the island. He already made a big distance between him and the mansion and decided to stop. He slowly descended on the ground and with his black eyes observed the area that surrounded him. He was tracking and trying to find Moria for more than 20 minutes already and yet there was no sign of him. There was no way that someone so inferior to him could escape from his wrath. The muscular young man closed his black eyes, concentrating and hoping that he would feel the presence of his prey, but only to his irritation he couldn't find him. He released a low growl when he heard something. The man immediately opened his eyes and with high speed dashed towards the place from where the noise came. He passed by a large tree when he saw Moria running away behind the trees. The man had enough of wasting his time and opened his closed hand in which a yellow key orb was formed. The key orb grew in size after he fired it and consumed everything in its path when eventually it swallowed Moria. The new member of the Straw Hat pirate crew walked through the smoke until he saw something moving in it. As the smoke cleared away, the man was surprised when he saw only a black shadow in a shape of Gecko Moria disappearing. What was even worse, the shadow had a smile on it which only added fuel to fire. When the dark shadow completely vanished, the young man stood in his place for a few short seconds with his fist closed until he growled. Arfed! Immediately after he snarled a dark slash blue aura appeared around him, destroying the whole area that surrounded him. Under his golden boots, there was a small crater which was created by his sudden energy explosion. He gritted hard with his teeth while he had his fist clenched almost to the point where it started bleeding. He cursed at himself for being so easily fooled, he couldn't believe that he, a scion, could be oversmart by such a lowly creature. What angered him, even more, was the laugh he heard from the back of his head. It was the voice of his father, laughing and mocking him. The scion flew high in the sky, leaving the destroyed ground behind him. He stopped when he reached the wanted height and stared down as his aura flared around his thin but yet muscular body. He placed his right hand in front and fired a barrage of yellow blasts towards the largest ship in the world. The key blast created explosions mostly around the forest where a lot of people were hiding from the sunlight, but the scion didn't care for them. His anger was climbing new heights, his hair slowly spiked and his black pupils repeatedly changed color from black to teal. He stopped and raised his hand and aimed towards the mansion. This time, a big key ball appeared in front of his open palm. He was about to fire it and obliterate the building and everyone in it when something stopped him. It was the voice. That gentle and calm voice which was ever since he came to this world growing louder and stronger. The voice was telling him to stop, to calm down, but his rage was greater than the gentle voice. That rage was who he was and no one could stop it when images flashed in front of his eyes. He remembered that the others were inside, looking for the orange-haired woman, the coward, and Furball. His hair was slowly falling down, but only to go up again when the other voice, his beast, appeared. There were nothing to him, he was a scion and scions didn't need. Friends. The word echoed in his mind as he remembered what happened when he first met Luffy and the others. They were the first people who treated him right, they didn't try to control him like his father did nor did they mock him. He today even for the first time in his life received an appreciation. He growled, torn between the two decisions when he heard a loud detonation. He raised his head up and saw a large creature falling down from the sky. The creature released a loud yell, causing the scion to cover his ears even though he was very far away. He could hear the giant creature speak something and it seemed like it moved in his direction. His hair fell down like it usually was and the key ball disappeared. The rage was replaced with an interest in the creature which appeared out of nowhere. The giant to his surprise placed a large boulder on its head between two big horns and started yelling once again. I'm gonna be the king of the pirates! Shouted the creature as his voice echoed through the whole place. The giant monster was slowly approaching the place where the scion was floating. The scion just moved from the giant creature path and observed it for a moment. He began to think if this big creature was possibly even taller than Oozuru. 
An interesting thought crossed his mind. A battle between Oolzeru and this creature would be quite an amusing fight. He once again released a low snarl and cursed his father for cutting off his tail. The scion snapped from thinking about his deceased father when he noticed that the red monster stopped moving. He watched it standing there for a few minutes until the giant threw away the boulder and walked back to the mansion. Broly didn't know what caused the sudden change, but he decided to follow the strange creature. Broly slowly floated far away from the giant when he on accident saw some people on the roof. He recognized the swordsman and the cyborg who held the skeleton from falling down. The two of them were yelling something which made the scion look to the crushed rubble when he saw the blonde-haired cook underneath the giant feet. Broly was thinking to land on the ground when he noticed the long-nosed pirate standing just in the place where he wanted to land. The scion thought for a moment if he even wanted to land now since he was sure that the long-nosed man would probably scream in fear. He decided to stay floating in the air when the giant once again yelled. Show yourselves! Straw Hat Crew! The monster roared the name of the pirate crew as it raised his closed fists. It was pretty obvious to Broly that the creature was looking for a fight, a fight he was more than welcome to give. Broly was about to approach the giant when he heard the cook yell at the monster. Oi! Move away, idiot! The hell do you think you're doing getting in our way, Luffy? Angrily yelled the pirate cook Sanji who had much more important things to do. Such as rescue Nami from that damn lion guy who once again kidnapped her, but this time from him which was something he would never forgive himself. Luffy? He's my enemy. My name is Oz. Pleased to meet you. Replied the giant Oz who glanced down at the small man in a black suit. He looked the man on the ground for a few moments when he glanced at his left arm. On his left arm was a list of all straw hat wanted posters. I saw a poster with a man with swirly eyebrows and looked back at the blonde man. A spitting image. You are one of the pirates too. Goma Goma no. The monster placed his left hand in front while the other hand was above his head, comma. Everybody watching thought that the arm would stretch, but even without stretching the monster had a big reach and brute force which Sanji barely avoided. The cook ran towards the giant and jumped in hopes to kick him in the head. He was about to kick Oz, but the monster countered the kick with his forehead, knocking Sanji back on the ground. The blonde-haired man bounced from the ground when to his shock he was punched into a building. Blood covered his left side of the face as he was falling down along with the rubble, but was caught by the monster. Oh shit! He's going to die! Shouted Zoro from the roof, on which Chopper gasped in shock. They feared for Sanji's life when they saw something hit the giant at the back of his large head. Chopper turned to the right and saw Usopp standing with his weapon. The long nose trembled in fear, but he forced himself for the sake of his friend. What made him tremble even more was the fact that the little fire on the Oz head didn't do a thing. The long-haired monster turned around and threw Sanji into the rubble. The monster checked the posters once again and saw two people matching and walked towards their location. This is bad. Frankie, draw his attention over here. Yelled Zoro quickly to the cyborg who nodded and immediately fired a cannonball from his left hand, but to everyone's shock the giant avoided the attack with such agility and ease that even surprised the scion floating in the air a little bit. Oz was already in the air and kicked the tower on which Zoro, Frankie, and Brooke were. They were falling down, but Zoro was the only one who managed to land on the giant arm from which he attacked him. With one sword in his mouth and two in his hands, he attacked Oz, Itchy Gorilla. His left arm bulked, and I gorilla, now his right arm bulked the same way. He was in front of the giant face when he released a final shout, Santuryu. Nigger Isaac. Zoro went for a slice, but it was stopped by the big sharp tooth. However, he sliced the tooth and was sure to slice the giant head in half, but once again Oz dodged as he lowered down. Before Zoro could do anything, Oz kicked him high towards the sky while the swordsman spat blood because of the powerful hit. Zoro! Are you alive? Oh no! He's going to die if he falls from that height! Screamed Usopp as he watched his friend already falling down. He didn't know what to do, he needed to think of something otherwise Zoro would die. Eat this you monster! Mumbled Frankie as he once again tried to hit the monster with a new attack. Weapons left! The cyborg again missed his target, 
or would it be better to say that the monster once again avoided the attack? What? He dodged it again. Ugg yelled the man in disbelief, but that was quickly replaced with pain when both he and Brooke were hit by Oz's attack. The two of them fell on the ground, while Zoro was also close to it. Zoro is falling this way, said Chopper who warned Robin who already prepared herself for helping and preventing Zoro from hitting the ground. Cien Fleur, Spider Net. The moment Robin said those words, a net of arms grew from the half-destroyed bridge and quickly surrounded Zoro, saving him from falling to the ground and dying. The swordsman spilled more blood, but as he opened his left eye he cursed when he saw us holding a boulder. Chopper yelled in fear while Robin sweated when they heard someone yelling from behind their backs. Eat this! You're a zombie too! Salt Star! Usopp fired the small bag filled with salt that was given to him and managed to hit inside the open mouth. All of them stood there and waited for something or anything to happen, but unfortunately nothing. ITIT wasn't enough for this huge body. Concluded the long nose on which Chopper couldn't do anything else than transform and at least do something. Heavy gong! The now big Chopper raised his left fist and jumped towards Oz, but the giant just threw a big boulder at him and the others behind. All of them were lying on the ground, between the rubble covered in blood. The red monster stood above them and with his loud voice started talking. Emoria's servant! Oz! declared the monster after which he glanced back to the posters. The long-haired demon noticed that few people were missing amongst the one he already killed. Now, who's left? That straw hat guy from earlier, the orange girl and the hero. That's three of them, where could they be? Asked us himself as he scratched his head. The red demon was about to search for the three missing pirates when he heard some noise from behind. He turned around only to see a black-haired man floating in front of him. Oz stared at the man in confusion after which he looked at the posters. Hmm, you're not on the posters. Are you one of them? He didn't receive any answer from the floating man, but because of his loud voice the people he thought were dead stood from the ground and looked up. It was little to say how shocked Usopp and Chopper were when they saw Broly floating in the air in front of Oz's face. He's floating up there! How is he doing that? Yelled Chopper whose hat almost jumped from his head. Usopp was just as surprised, but instead of yelling his eyes were wide open. The long nose was still afraid of the new crew member, especially after what he saw him do to a vice admiral. A devil fruit, but let's show this giant bastard not to mess around with Luffy's shadow. Stated Sanji as he fired up his new cigarette on which the others nodded. They only took two steps forward when the scion warned them. Don't come any closer, I'll end this by my own two hands, spoke Broly who like always was expressionless. His words like previous actions surprised some while the others skeptically looked at his back. Sanji couldn't let that happen, they didn't know what or how strong Broly was, but he couldn't let a person die. The cook wanted to jump in there and distract the giant, but just then I started laughing. He he he, you're so funny. There's no one who can beat me, Oz. Laughed the monster who with his loud voice started to annoy the scion who never liked loud noises. Broly clenched his right fist and without even anyone from the ground see him move, he delivered an uppercut to the monster who was lifted from the ground because of the force behind that punch. To everyone's shock us crashed into the mansion after only whatever the hell Broly did. I, I think I'm dreaming. Mumbled Usopp whose eyes almost fell out because of so much shock in one day. Chopper who was next to him was in the same state, even his hat was shocked after what the scion did. Ununbelievable! He took him down like he was nothing! Yelled Frankie who didn't even saw Broly move, let alone punch us in the jaw.